What's going on, everybody? It's Friday night. This is the Red Cup Review with your hosts, Rob, Banks, and Baz, the Mezco victims, as I'm sure half of you that are watching right now are. What's going on? Thanks for joining. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Don't be a hanger on. You can catch me and Baz on Facebook at Official Red Cup Review The Rebellion and on Twitter at Official, no, not Official Anything, just at Red Cup Review on Twitter. What's going on, everybody? How are you? Nice to have you here with us. We got a couple of people in the chat, but we're not going to do the roll call until a few more people show up. And the night was just going to be me and Baz freeloading, freeballing, freeing it up. We're just going to open to the to the chat and talk a little bit of toys and a little bit of news. Oh, God. Baz, pickups of the week. What do you got going on? I'll uplift my spirits before I come bring in this whole stream crashing down before we get to the Mezco debacle. Pickups of the week is this... Uh... Mezco, uh, does that, yeah, does that count? <laughs> yeah, did you were you able to pick up your Mezco Christopher Reeve Superman? So, like after an hour, maybe an hour and a half of uh, attempting to to purchase it, uh, actually was successful, but um, accidentally had two in the uh, in the uh, cart, so I picked up two. Nice, I um, picked up two as well. Good. So you know, I could I could always, like you said, I could always trade that for a uh, Michael Keaton uh, eighty nine Batman, or yeah. just straight up sell it. So yeah. I mean, it's 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 not a bad figure to just have have doubles of anyway. You know, it's an exclusive. It's a super, no pun intended, classic character. Yep. Um, so I was able to get it, but you know, the initial frustration was you know. I was a little upset at first. Oh, that's you know? putting it lightly. I just want to. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll. I'll be the guy to say it. Fuck you, Mezco. Your <laughs> fucking bullshit practices. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm sure that rage you're displaying now was way worse around one o'clock today. <sighs> oh my. Well, I look. I got two of them as well. I got one for a uh, trade bait, and I got one for myself. Um. Look, we don't have fucking time uh, as adult collectors to be sitting around, click, refresh, click, refresh. I think I, it took me like 16 times to do it. It was it, it was one of the worst experiences I've had with their site. And I, yes, I did use PayPal and everything else I could, and it still didn't fucking matter. Um, they're horrible. Mezco is a horrible company. They, they've never learned after all these years. They Their customer service is crap, straight up crap. I've never seen a, a company run so ass backwards as i've seen with this company in particular um uh i did get two of them however not without hours of stress and i actually ordered the punk rock joker that was my pickup this week through poo poo panda okay poo poo panda was a site that was highly recommended from other people on the message boards and i ordered the punk rock joker and it was delivered on wednesday but i never got it because apparently the post office guy scanned it and marked it as delivered at 310 at my address on Wednesday. And it never got here, right? So between multiple phone calls and visits, I actually went today to the post office to visit them. And no one knows what happened, right? And I even got my postal worker, the guy that delivers my mail. And he was like, there was no packages for you on Wednesday. He goes, I remember uh, there was like an old Navy package, like, something that was kind of loose, felt like there was clothes in it. I went, yeah, exactly. That was the package you delivered. But there was another package that was supposed to be delivered. And he was like, dude, he was like, there was no package here for that. I says, well, somebody scanned it here as received. And he's like, well, it sure as hell wasn't me. And the people in the post office are saying that it wasn't them. So I says, well, you guys going to have a talk with your driver? Are you guys going to do anything about this? And they were like, uh, we don't know what to tell you if – you don't hear anything by tomorrow, call us again. And then you may have to take up with the claims department, but chances are you're going to be asked out of this and have to just pay for a lost figure. This is what they told me that the claims department isn't even going to respect my investigation into this because it was marked and scanned as delivered. So they actually scan the item, but it's not here somehow. And my actual postal worker doesn't even remember scanning it. But however, this is my, it's, I have to just deal with this somehow, just miraculously like, okay, fuck you. You deal with it. Have fun going and buying another Joker figure. So, oh my God, a lot of, a lot of frustration with Mezco this week. All the bad in the world, all the fucking people that are in Seattle that are putting their bad gray matter into the world and the takeover of the police department and everybody just brewing with this evilness, trying to navigate through that. 
and then having to deal with Mezco's bullshit on top of it. The, you know, the, look, the Joker thing isn't isn't Mezco's fault, but fuck them anyway. Okay, yeah. hope I'm making my day that much worse. But I did get two of them. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, besides so, that, are being you gonna a, buy another one? Are you gonna buy another Joker? Or? Uh, I don't know. I gotta wait. I gotta wait and see. It's probably just sitting somewhere on someone's truck, or no one knows where it is. No one's talking to each other. I'm like, yo, you want to call the? Guy? I was like, how about you call the drive the other driver? That's delivering the packages because say we had like two different drivers, one for regular mail, one for packages. And uh, they were like, look, we can't help you. We can't help you. Don't know what to tell you. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to call tomorrow and ask to speak to a manager because the, the, this is the issue. And I keep trying to bring this up to people. And all I keep getting is the hand in my face. And I'm like, look, every day that goes by is another day where the person who delivered the package supposedly isn't going to remember having the package or scanning it because they deal yeah. with hundreds of packages a day. I called on Wednesday and brought this up to their attention when they said it was delivered and it wasn't. Then I called again on Thursday. They told me they would call me back both days. I called today. We'll call you back. Took down my number. No one called. I went there. We can't help you. So this is and now I'm going to bring this up to the claims department come Monday, and I'm going to tell them everything that went down and how I keep get, kept getting the runaround. But whatever. Enough of that. Anyways. Enough of sad tidings. Time for some happy tidings, and he's actually watching right now. Uh, happy birthday. We have two big birthdays this week uh, that are worthy of uh, mentioning on the show. Happy birthday to Thor Gunderson, who's in the chat right now. That's Darth Castle, for those that know him by Darth Castle, and head of the, or, or partially head of the DCX open mic that goes on at 9 o'clock after us. So happy birthday, Darth Castle. Um he is uh, my best buddy, statue buddy in the whole wide world as far as uh, statue stuff goes. So happy birthday to him and happy birthday to uh, Brian McManus. He hasn't been able to join us in over a year, but he was one of the first people to ever come on Red Cup. And he is uh, Bri2J Presents. He does pretty much just straight up Mezco reviews. And he just had uh, twins, uh, twin girls. So happy birthday to him. And I hope you're having a good night, buddy. Okay. I think we could do a roll call. There's 10 people in the chat. So Trevor McGuire is with us. Thor, happy birthday, buddy. How are you? Rob, just a fan back. Awesome. My birthday was Sunday, 52. Ah, oh, okay. Well, happy 52nd birthday, Rob, just a fan. Glad that it was last Sunday and we didn't totally miss it. So we're, we're in the same week. Happy birthday, man. Uh, let's see who else is with us tonight. The Briscoe, the fist from the north. What's going on, man? How are you? Edwin Diaz, always good to see him in the chat. Love that guy. Uh, CM Brock is with us. Uh, he finally caught the chat. What's up? How are you? How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, I catch him uh, periodically on the Red Cup uh, review Facebook page, so it's nice to see him. And the Toy Mafia, Mr. Uh, Egyptian, modern Egyptian hieroglyphics of Facebook and, and typing himself. How are you? Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now that that's over with, and it's time to bring it back down for a second. Um. We spoke about the, the Mezco 112 Superman debacle. Now we're going to take a closer look at Superman himself, and then we're going to take a look at some Iron Studios. We are not going to do the Sideshow website this week. Sideshow's website is completely wonky today. They found a lot of stuff that was in stock that they thought was long sold out. They put it back up for order, and their site didn't just crash. It just doesn't work, and pictures aren't showing up, so I'm not dealing with that nonsense. We're not going to look at that. So we're going to be looking at the Iron Studio statues, the 112 Collective Superman and Wonder Woman that was released. We're going to talk a little Magic the Gathering and how racist it is, or is it? And we're going to talk about our favorite music albums that we were supposed to talk about last week. So it's going to be a little bit more of an old school throwback show this week with very little collectibles sprinkled in. So here we're going to do the screen share. We're going to go to the 112 Collective Superman. Let us know if you guys got your Mezco 112 Collective uh Superman Christopher Reeve figure. Uh, I thought this, I think this figure looks great with the exception of the smiling sculpt. I think he looks pretty damn good here. Um, again, Mezco doesn't know how to take pictures of their figures, so they always look like shit. For some reason, it's saying that the, the, the cape is kind of droopy and weird looking. And then when you read the description, it actually says, let's see, uh, Kryptonite costume, fitted suit with authentic detailing, Superman movie cape. With integrated posing wire right here, it says it, okay? So for some reason, you don't get the posing wire here when you're looking at it, but he is going to have a posable cape cape with the posing wire. So there you go, right? So there you go, bang. Uh, again, these are just prototype shots. I'm sure he's going to look better than this. I think this head sculpt looks awesome. Uh, I think it looks really good. Nice determined look. 
for Superman. Very nicely done. Much better than the other one. And I am totally, totally waiting for an actual smiling sup Superman sculpt done correctly. This smiling one, however, ha does not look that good. All right. So there's, you know, looks like his arms can go straight up, which is really nice. He looks really good here in this photo. And here's the smiling <laughs> sculpt. <laughs> <laughs> um i don't even know what this expression is he's smiling <laughs> but he looks like he's smiling with like a distaste for what he's looking at <laughs> like um would you like a shit sandwich, Clark? Uh, maybe. Thanks, <laughs> Jimmy. Uh. <laughs> oh my God! I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Well, uh, oh, hey, Zade Comics is, is is in the chat. Baz, what's up? Hey, hey what's up? Buddy? What's going on? Uh, Lost good, pages, son. Yes, go check out the Lost Pages on Indiegogo. You know, you, you'll thank us later. They got they do some real good stuff there, man. Uh, have oh, Havoc Dog is here too. We haven't seen him in a while. Uh, I have, I had to have this. I'll take anything Mezco does from my childhood. Reeve Superman, Keaton Bats, Ghostbusters, Freddie Jason Myers have to have the Warriors set. Yes, I agree. Totally on board with that too. It's just this face. We're just making fun of this specific yeah. sculpt right here that looks. The figure looks great. This doesn't. <laughs> this. We gotta just stop doing teeth, right? Just no. Yeah, open they mouth just shit. did the the. Baz, you remember that 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 photo you took for of yourself when you took that Saint Clair's photo from a hundred years ago? I think you were like like seven or eight in the photo, and you had like the Christopher Reeve half smile. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's the smile right there. The half. Uh, that's all they need to do is the smirk, the half smile smirk. Yeah, and just stay away from the. Uh, I think they were trying to go for like the end of the movie when he's like smiles to the camera and then flies off. I think that's a, that's what they were going for. Um, he looks fine here. Again, the cape <laughs> kind of have a wire in it, so do, don't mind the cape. A lot of people were like, "Oh, the S is too small. The S is not too small. It fills out his chest just fine." They like his underwears are too big. I think the underwears look good because they don't look like panties. Finally, I'm cool with that. It, it fits way better than the the, the first uh, Superman from Mexico. Oh yeah, no way. Yeah. They got a better body too for this. Yeah, and um, I, I, he looks. Good. I mean, he looks pretty good here. Again, that cape looks horrific because it doesn't. They don't have the wire in it presently, and they're promoting it as having a wire, so that's fine. Uh, the base is really nice, though. The base is really nice. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. That's when I was I was like giving up buying. And I was like, "Fuck this shit, fuck that." And then I saw that base. I was like, "God damn it!" <laughs> I was like, "Must have." See, I like yeah, this. I, I like just, the fact I, that you I, can I, have his fists come together, like you know, like he could do like the the true Christopher Reeve like fly pose. I think that's really mm. awesome looking. Let's get to the point where they show you everything that the figure comes with, though. I want to I want to get to that. I'm all about that base, bro. All about that base. All right, so here we go. You got See, the I need some place. I need some place to put this. This is uh, da, 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 a light up feature, right? Da, 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 da. You got the three different crystals, which is nice. The the you know the different things from the first movie, the kryptonite rocks, all the different hands that you would want for a Superman, and then you have uh, uh, Christopher Reeve head sculpt and Alfred Newman head sculpt <laughs> in case you want to have. Uh, you know, uh, you know what's funny is that the face actually doesn't look that as bad in this photo because it's like mm -hmm. kind of far away and small than it does in the other ones. But um, this well, you know you're gonna have you're gonna have custom guys come come out with a yeah with a good face exactly. They have a custom Christopher Reeve head sculpt that right now that's pretty good, and they're gonna have another guy probably that comes out. You know maybe Tony May or yeah. somebody will have a smiling sculpt that looks more like Christopher Reeve. And uh, in, in which case, I'll definitely be shelling out the money for that. I don't give a shit. This is like one of those things where it's like, you know what? My Hot Toys doesn't come with a smiling Christopher Reeve head sculpt. Can something come with a damn smiling Superman head sculpt for once? But um, so that was it. There, there's your friggin' Superman. Uh, there's, there's your Superman for the for the day here. Uh, did anybody and everybody get it? Did he sell out yet? I don't think he sold out yet. It looks like he's still up for pre-order, which is kind of weird. I don't know how these Mezco figures like um, – the roaches sell out, but something like this doesn't. I mean, maybe it's just based on like the look of the figure, 
but um, <laughs> normal head sculpt and looking at Lois taking a shower head sculpt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, man, yeah. So I, I think he looks good. Uh, you know, so it is what it is. Whatever. Go get yours if you haven't got it. Maybe we should just wait. Maybe like something like this, like where it's got like that specific, that specific nostalgia thing for us. Maybe we should kind of like lean back and not just jump on the minute the Mezco site goes live. Because I was able to, I went through a, like a, an hour of nonsense, and then uh, at like, like, well, this went up at twelve, right? Right, one o'clock. It was like an hour and 20 minutes into the sale that I got mine and it went right through. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, the 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 things that have the hype train doesn't seem to th be the things that me and Baz are into. Things like this, the Keaton didn't sell out immediately either. So I think you might have a chance of just waiting that first hour so you don't have to just sit there and stare at a blank computer screen. Well, this was like all over. There was advertisements for this all over my uh, Facebook uh, uh, page. Like comic book pages were promoting this, uh, toy pages. Like it was, it was really being pushed. Uh, yeah, no, they they had a lot. Of, yeah, this was like a big advertisement thing for this, uh, and they didn't show the figure until today, until like right now, mm. which is, I thought was kind of weird too. Uh, my wife says that's him using his X-ray vision on Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> I want well, a Lex. I would definitely love a freaking Lex. Oh yeah, suit, suited up. Oh no, that would be uh, like a Gene Hackman Lex would be would be wonderful, yeah. you know. Or even at the three pack. Well, this is Superman the first movie. It's not the second movie, so who knows if we're going to even get anything else? I'm getting this figure to pair imagine, up with like eating bats until they, they imagine actually... a three a three pack of non Ursa oh. and Zod. Yeah, man, that'd be great. I was going to say that, like you know. Uh, they released that the other three packs of stuff. If they could do the Warriors, they should be able yeah. to do, um, you know, the Terrence Stamp and 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 the other the other three it would be great. Oh God, you know. Uh, let's see. Well, maybe that's him using his X-ray vision on Lois and finding out that she's really more like Jimmy than Lois, if you know what I mean. And him going, "Hey, Lois, oh." oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's super cringe face. Uh, and now we just need a Linda Carter to complete the classic trilogy, as says t uh, Trevor. Yes, Linda Carter would be friggin' lovely. Although, that the I'll tell you what. Taking a look at the next figure we're going to look at, uh, I'm all about it. It's the, uh, the, the Wonder Woman. So we're going to move on from Superman. The modern Wonder Woman also went up for pre-order this week. And uh, let's see. This figure looks fantastic. <laughs> The hell are you doing? What? What are you talking about? You talking about? What? what? Huh? Who? Huh? Huh? Uh, really? So, that's modern. That's modern Wonder Wonder Woman. Wouldn't that yes, just really be their version of Wonder Woman? Um. Well, this is their the the more modern Wonder Woman, I guess. Right. Yeah. The classic one came out. Here's the modern, and the classic one looks like she might just fit in with the Reeve and the uh, and the Keaton. If you're not going to get a Linda Carter, I guess that might be the closest thing you're going to get to it. And then you can obviously have this Wonder Woman perhaps with your Justice League if you wanted to get both Wonder Womans. Mm -hmm. I think she looks great. Uh, I love the, uh, I mean, I like the more brighter colors for my heroes, but I think she looks absolutely fine. I'm, I love the head sculpt. She comes with pretty much all the other stuff the other one does. Uh, except this one has a red cape. She's got the body armor. She looks great. I'd like, unfortunately, they don't show you any pictures of her without the body armor though, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, one thing that's changed, she doesn't have that that strand of hair that was just kind of hanging over her face. Like this, this head sculpt right here had that extra strand of hair, and um, that strand of hair ain't there no more. And I'm, I kind of like, I'm, kinda, I know one guy was complaining, oh, where's my messed up hair? And I'm like, nah, you know what? That would probably break off easily. So they probably went with this. They were probably having factory problems, if I had to guess. This one has the golden gauntlets, and all this body armor and stuff comes off. So you'll be able to have her without the, the body armor if you so choose. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do one pauldron. I got to see it in hand first. Again, I want to draw your attention to the bull joints up in the up in here in the biceps. It does look like she's going to have a little bit more range of motion than we're used to because it doesn't look like the bicep is going to interfere with the actual articulation here. I think you're going to get a little bit more of a deeper pose there. I love how they're showing her off with a Superman figure that's been sold out like a hundred times over and they need to just redo it. This is awesome. Her facing off with Darkseid. 
Wait, is that the extra strand of hair that I was talking about? Yeah, no, there's the strand of hair. They just moved it. Here's your strand of hair that's separate from the rest of them. They just moved it to the side of her head, which was a smart move in my in my opinion. That's cool. She looks great. You're going to be able to cross her hands over her chest and get that, uh, you know, she her bracelets have like magnets in them. So you can have like the bullet bounce off effect in the bracelets. That's pretty cool. Something the classic doesn't have. Her skirt is actually material. So you'll be able to get really good range of motion. The same range of motion that the other one has. She is not going to have any ab crunch or ab articulation at all or waist articulation. So you can, you can kiss that sucker goodbye. And here's everything she comes with. So you're going to have the shoulder armor is removable with the arm bands. Shoulder armor and armbands, and the whole neck piece you can remove and just have her in her corset. She has the multiple hands. Again, the same lasso thing that the other one had, and all the other regular weapons except this one also comes with, you know, the the reflective, the bracelets of reflectiveness or whatever the hell they call it. I think they call the the. Sl I don't want to say their their true name because we might get booted off of YouTube for using that word. What? Here's what it is? Yeah, I, I, dude. The n it. the n word? No, it's the the, the 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 s l a v e r y slavery. Slavery? Yeah, yeah God, say it. I, I, oh. I just said we shouldn't say it, and then you just go and start saying it. That's fine. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, did anybody? El her eyebrows are a bit too mean, though. Yeah, I don't know. I I I get it, uh, Jez. I'm I'm kind of. Uh, I, 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 that's what I got my classic for. Um, I think I, I, I like this badass. I'm going to bust your face. Wonder woman. You know, I think that's pretty cool myself. So I don't know Did anybody pick up this wonder woman. Also, um, uncle Pete asked a question. Anybody pick up the Punisher war machine? That figure looks sick. I'm guessing you're talking about the hot toys figure. No, I didn't. I know the paradox nerd did. So shout out to PJ paradox nerd. He did a review on that figure. It does look cool, but I have no connection to Punisher War Machine, and that's based off of a video game that I don't play. And the Punisher himself looks looks Japanese, and he's supposed to be Italian. So I don't need a Japanese Punisher figure, even though I probably keep him with the the head thing on with the skull painted on the the War Machine Iron Man -y thing. Um, okay, <sighs> I'm digging NECA Godzilla's. Been buying them a lot up lately at my local Target. I'm sure that uh, Nick Knack has been all over those. Uh, Nick Knack's a big Godzilla guy. So there's that too. Baz, did you pick up the uh, Mezco Wonder Woman Modern? Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. So you, yeah, you went from doing no pickups to just pickups galore, huh? Awesome. I like it. It's Wonder all Woman, right. dude. What the fuck? Exactly. She just gets it. It's just Wonder Woman, so she gets all the she love. Gets she gets it. She gets it. She gets it. She gets it. Uh, so yeah, I was all about that. Ha ha, Japanese punch. Okay. Well, there you go. There's a, oh, there you go. It's a it's nice a Linda Carter. Card. Yeah, not bad. You know, you could probably get away with putting her next to uh, the movie Soups and Batman from Mesco. Where is that from? That's a DC Signature series. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you know the ones, the ones that made uh, that line had Flash from the TV show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you what. If if they're able to do it, I don't see why Mesco wouldn't do it. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody wants to buy these stupid ass roaches for whatever the fuck sake that is but whatever by all means if you like the roach you know i don't it is what it is um okay moving on from mezco because i've had enough hate for them for one night uh we're gonna go to iron studios real fast we're not gonna spend too much time looking at that and then we're gonna talk about music and some magic the gathering stuff and just regular news and shit like that uh let's see iron studios sharing the page here it is iron studios this week had three figures that they weren't disclosed oh, here's some more uh coming soon too with pictures let's see protected as a bane art scale ghost rider and a tony stark and mark one for some reason they're not showing the pictures there they put the colossus up for pre-order we looked at him last week along with pyro and the saber tooth and now this week you got bishop emma frost and omega red baz pick one same old shit. Uh, give me Emma Frost for 500. Emma Frost for 500. Ding. The Daily Double. The Pawali Pawapples. I think she looks what good, is, man. What is vagina? She looks hot. She's got the Sentinel tore up base, so she'll fit in with the rest of them. And her face sculpt is really nice, man. Let me see the facha. Give me the facha. Uh, 
So it's good. I like the pose. The pose isn't isn't the same old one knee up pose that I've been complaining about. And there's the face. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, a little bit of a chin there. A little man, manly. Yeah, yeah she's nice. a little hard over here, right in the corners here and here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little. She can, a little take, a, she can take a shot. She can take a nice. She can take right a shot. Over. She can take a few shots. I've always liked Emma Frost. She was always one. Of I do too, but you know, I didn't. I didn't like that stupid fucking secondary uh, mutant power they gave her. Which oh, was Grant right? Morrison. That made no sense. It, it wasn't connected to her, her primary power whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, she, could, she could turn diamond. And then they played it up in freaking first class. Yeah, no, that's, you know? that's, you know, I like her being like the, because maybe because they thought she was too similar to Jean Grey, you know, mm. but she's like, then, oh, Jean she's, Grey kind of. I don't know. I think yeah. she, I, I like it. I like, I think she'll, look, man, I love the Hellfire Club. I love that whole story. I think she looks dope. She's got an awesome outfit. And she's regal, and she, you know, everything fits her character, you know. I didn't even really like it when they turned her good. I like sometimes I like my villains just to be villainous, but you know, I mean, I know Astonishing X Men was like really like a very. I'm a pet. I don't like. I don't like that one at all. I don't like her body. I don't like her face. I don't like her eyebrows. Who? That freaking that the statue we just saw. Terrible. Oh, really? You don't like that face sculpt? I think she looks hot. Not the. All right, here's uh, Bishop jumping off of a bookcase. All right, to, to go in with the same diorama for the Sentinels. I'm glad they're sticking with that. I'm, I'm a fan of reading also. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think he looks good. I love him. I like he got his old outfit, his old 90s outfit, first appearance Bishop. It's great. He's got a nice little cool uh, energy effect going there with the gun. What else? Not, enough Jerry, not enough Jerry Curl, though. They, they, they straighten his hair out too. <laughs> it looks yeah, good. Yeah. I like the face sculpt. The gritted teeth is nice. Uh, the M could have been maybe a little bit darker. Being that's being super nitpicky though. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of a line around the hairline where it's detached, so that could be a problem mm -hmm. for statue collectors. Where it looks like maybe he's wearing a wig. Uh, again, being super nitpicky. I do like the face itself though. Everything else is pretty on point. The paint looks good. Uh, yeah, no, they gave him the mullet. They gave him like the flowy mullet yeah, instead what of the, the fuck? curl. Yeah. Look at that. That's that's that's, that's not his hair. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, listen, it looks good. It looks good enough for me. Uh, I'm not doing the dude. By the time you're done paying off this entire X Men set, you're going to be like five thousand dollars in debt. That's just insane. Okay, to so over. so far, two pieces of crap. Next. <laughs> 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 this looks cool. This looks actually cool. Yeah. This is uh, yeah. This is pretty pretty awesome, man. He's a little bit bigger than the other ones, too, I think. So he looks good. The coils look really good. Uh, Omega Red's a cool character. I like him. I, I'm not the biggest in the world Omega Red fan. I don't understand that. What's this like? All of a sudden, this character that was never really that cool is now the coolest character ever. Like, I'm noticing, like, first of all, we're living in the day and age where either something is terrible and it sucks or it's the greatest thing ever. And this happened, like, about... 10 years ago or so when Deadpool became like the greatest character of all time. And then Harley Quinn became the greatest character of all time. And now Mega Red is the greatest character of all time. And I'm like, they could, just pretty be, fucking cool. they could just be cool. They don't have to be the greatest. I think it's like the greatest thing ever. It's like a character from that was in a style that was cool for like a couple of issues. It's now like the, I'm waiting for the day where they like strife and, and the mutant liberation front greatest characters ever. It's like, all right, dude, like, give me a fucking break. Okay, they're Maverick. good characters, but they're greatest not the character greatest ever. characters ever. I mean, but yeah, he looks good. I'm not going to totally hate. I think, he I think good he's going to show up on the uh, Winter Soldier television series on Disney+. Plus. Well, that's pretty cool. So they're going to start introducing these characters, you know, drip drip them in. Uh, there was also news this week that Beyonce was 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 cast to play Storm in the in the next Black Panther movie. which nah, I think it's, it's not Storm. I heard it wasn't Storm. All right. I heard that she's up. She's up for a character. No, nah, man. Let's can we have a good actress? Well, let's exactly. Learn. I thought that. I thought that would have been a pretty cool way to introduce Storm in a Black Panther movie. I think that would have been pretty awesome. Just you know, get us a, a, a like a real actress. Good actress, like just Angela Bassett. All right, she probably still looks good. <laughs> Dude, she's like sixty, bro. That those it that that, that flew the coop, man. That that flew, that totally flew. All right, so we're done with Iron. Hold Star. on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Robert just a fan bought Doom Patrol Blu-ray finally. Season two coming HBO. Yes, HBO Max, and I also think uh, the the DC uh, subscription subscription service still has it. 
Um, season two, I think that starts uh, the 26th to the 28th, I think, but at the end of the month. We got right. season two coming for Timber Trail. Uh, let's see. Iron Studios, or as I call them, the 500, 800 Studios. Okay. Because you're probably going to wind up spending that much money just to get a team together. I don't know. But uh, yeah, 10 scale staff. Mike is nervous, says that he wishes they were a little bit bigger. And you're going to wind up paying a little bit more. And then you're going to be in tweeter head prices. You know, we're lucky that these things are these things are creeping up. They're peaking. Like these last three releases are only like 20 bucks less than the Batman and Robin uh, double statue from them. So it's like, we're really going to start paying $200 now for statues that are eight inches. I mean, it's we're getting a it's getting a little ridiculous. The the price on these things is getting it's going up so fast that whenever I see somebody go, "Us oh, the cost of materials," it's like, look, dude, things don't jump forty, fifty, sixty dollars every three, four months. That's just insane. So, to me, that's just a bullshit argument. I was thinking of picking up the Moffix McFarlane Spidey and the Hush Batman Returns Batman, uh, and the Hush. Batman Returns Batman? I don't know. I mean, I know that they have a Hush Batman. I know they have a Dark Knight Returns Batman. And Baz is the guy to talk to as far as that goes. So if you want to talk about Moffex, he's the guy uh, to, to answer your question on that. I don't even own a Moffex figure. Yeah, I chilled out with those, man. All right. Well, well I mean, do you speak on their quality? I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know. They're all right. How do you? How are you the fucking host of a goddamn YouTube show based on toys? And you're like, fuck toys. <laughs> you want to talk okay. politics? <laughs> like, what are we talking here? <laughs> they're they're in my box right now, so I can't really talk about them. Which um, ones? Uh, Mafex? Uh, I don't know. I can't really miss <laughs> SH figures. Why do you do this show? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. Those things are in my my freaking plastic box. Oh God. Anyways, moving along. <laughs> want to talk fucking? Like you do the reviews, bro. I do you just make fun of shit. Uh, face. What are we doing next? Magic, Magic, the Gathering, or <laughs> what's the other one? Or the albums. Let's get the fucking albums out of the way before we <laughs> rage against. Before we rage against the machine. <laughs> Uh, while Bazaar gets the albums up and ready, uh, let's see. Rob, you think this new Superman will affect the price of the old Super Mezco? Well, the old Super Mezco, no. Do I think it's going to drop the price of the old Super Mezco? No, because it's a totally different version. People might try taking the head on the old Superman, though, and popping it on this body. If they're not fans of the Christopher Reeve version, that's possible, in which case it might. I'm still waiting on a custom suit from Harker Customs. And uh, and Dante Young, they joined forces to make a new Superman suit. And yes, I'm probably I'm trying not to uh, butcher my Superman when I can possibly sell him. Uh, you'll have to refresh my memory. Do you have the suit already? And you're waiting for me to do the trunks, belt, and cape. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to answer this guy after. It's, it's ridiculous. So, anyways, I'm waiting to get my new Superman suit, and then I have to operate on a $400 figure to put a new suit on him with a wire cape. And I really don't want to do that when I could actually make a couple of bucks that could probably possibly buy me this Christopher Reeve I just bought, like to fund my next purchase. Uh, <clears throat> Rob, you still doing the night shift? You look well rested, buddy. Absolutely not. Uh, it's just my rage over Mezco that got me like that. And I went for the first time out to Applebee's and had a beer, and I had some dinner. We 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 socially distanced. We went outside and had a nice meal with the family uh, for the first time in like four months. What'd you order? Uh, what did I get? We got. We got um, we got spicy tacos as an appetizer, me and Gray, and we got um, uh, he got a corn dog, and I ordered the fuck did I order? Oh, I ordered like this whiskey burger that's got like um, like this weird like sauce of theirs or whatever with like onions on it and shit. It was just like a really big friggin' hamburger. I just haven't had a regular hamburger and fries like out. I mean, like you know the wife makes hamburgers once a week, but we haven't had like a real big whiskey and, and and just french fries this is you know what i haven't had outdoor like outside fries from a from an establishment in four months so that's what we did 
Uh, so that was really nice. However, yeah, I'm still on the night shift. I'm probably going to be on the night shift this point going forward because they'll make whatever. I don't, I'm not here to talk about my fucking job. I just thank you for, for telling me I look well rested. I know I've been a, a little bit of a, a Debbie down in the last few weeks. Getting into the albums. Baz, take it away. Tell us what you did. Why were you even talking about music albums? Blah, 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 blah. Why are we talking about music albums? I don't know. It was one night I was fucking like, let's fucking, you know, the, the Facebook page is usually fucking dead. You so are I'm the like, host you know, of a YouTube channel. <laughs> so I'm like, let, let me spice it up a little bit with something different. You know, let's talk, let's talk music. You know, everyone loves fucking music. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, it's a toy channel or a toy friggin' Facebook page, but everyone loves music. So I'm like, hey, what are your favorite top 10 albums off the top of your head? You know, so we got some responses. And uh, maybe three weeks later, we're going to actually read them. <laughs> we had Zade on last week, so that kind of put a you know put a. And then the week before, we didn't do a show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, so now these were the responses I got. Uh, why? Am, well, they were I, in no particular order, right? No, no particular order off the top of your head, and I'm echoing. You're echoing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't hear you echo on my side. Go ahead. Try. Try and talk. Okay. Yeah, I'm still echoing. You have to lower the volume on your end because it's um, – am I echoing? No. No. I'm echoing. All right. We're, we're going to take you out and put you right back in. Hold on. Move from stream. Add to stream. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Still. <laughs> Guys, uh, is Baz echoing? Everybody in the chat, is Baz having an echo effect on his voice? Anybody at all? <laughs> is Baz <laughs> Everyone left the stream. No one gives a fuck. Okay, go ahead. It's not. Good. All right. My Alex Jones impression freaking just batted it away. Okay. All right, there we sounds go. Like just sounds okay. Go ahead. Okay, so Julio Gomez uh, starts it off with. At number one, remember this is not in any particular order. Number one, um, <laughs> he's not watching right now. <laughs> I know. Number one, Madonna erotica. I've never heard, <laughs> never heard the other. Why are you laughing so hard? Because I know Julio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me and Julio down by the schoolyard. <laughs> my my uncle's name is Julio too, and my grandfather. All right, so okay, so right number two, Gun Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction, excellent. I know that album very well. Excellent fucking album, groundbreaking album at the time. Uh, at number three, get ready to laugh again, Madonna, Bedtime Stories. <laughs> Just keep going. I don't Just know. Keep, keep going. What's on that album? I have no clue. While like we're any, talking about these top, well, look, if we go through everybody's top 10, you're just going to have to name them because if we do this, it's going to take like two hours. So while we're talking, going, guys, relax, come. relax. You're fucking, you're fucking always so panicky about shit. Uh, okay. Um, Michael Jackson, dangerous. Which yeah, one? I would have put, like, put fucking thriller on there, man. Thriller or, uh, or off the wall. Yeah, easy. Uh, even bad is better than dangerous, yeah. no? All right. Number five, Prince Purple Rain. Yes, I agree. Awesome. Perfect. Great, great show. Um, Titanic soundtrack. No. Sorry, <laughs> dude. But, it, you know, it, it, this is personal taste. Um, Hans Zimmer BVS uh, soundtrack. Yes. Excellent fucking soundtrack. I actually bought that, too. Um, Janet Jackson, Rhythm Nation. All right. Fine. Um, Hans Zimmer, Lion King score. Okay. I've never even seen the Lion King. You know that? So. All right. So now we got we got our boy Kenny Beeler. Not not in any in any order he says. Good. Uh, number one, Master of Puppets. Yes, of course. Uh, Ride the Lightning. Awesome. And Justice, number three, and Justice for All. The top. He's three. a Metallica <laughs> fan, huh? Metallica, yeah. <laughs> um, number four, The Wall. Awesome. Dark nice. Side of the Moon. Pink Floyd. Um, Kiss. Destroyer. Nice. Excellent list. Uh, Nice. This is a good one. The Downward Spiral of uh, Nine Inch Nails. Nice. Good one. Uh, number eight, Peace of Mind from Iron Maiden. Um, Enter the Wu-Tang from Wu-Tang Clan. 
Number nine. Right. And at number 10, Dio, Holy Diver. Nice. Oh, uh, this kid has gr- great fucking taste. <laughs> um, okay, so now we got... Uh, I'll do your list next to mine later. Um, okay, we got Mike, Mark, Mark, Mike Martinez. He's got uh, Black Delilah Murder, Unhallowed. Never heard of that. Um, Wu-Tang Clan, 36 Chambers. Uh, number three, Murder by Death, Who Will Survive? Ring any bells? Nope, I don't know these bands. Uh, Murder by Death, Red of Tooth and Claw. Um, Damn, fucking, there are some crazy bastards that, that follow us, man. As, listen, you know, uh, Under Oath, Define the Great Line. I mean, there's decades of music we've probably just uh, tuned out of. Out of uh, Tribe Called Quest, Midnight Marauders. Awesome album. Really? Is it better than yeah. Low End Theory? No, nah, I would go, oh, phew. Ah, it's, ooh, that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one, because Moonlight Marauders has a war tour on it, man. Oh. Yeah, that's a good song. Okay, um, Bouncing Souls, How I Spent My Summer Vacation. <laughs> Bouncing Souls? What the fuck? Weird name. All right. Uh, AFI, All Hallows EP. Um, Suicide Machines, Destruction by Definition. And Death by Stereo, If Looks Could Kill, I'd Watch You Die. Wow. <laughs> Dude, shit, eat, a fucking, eat some ice cream. <laughs> Get yourself some fucking <laughs> uh, some lollipops or something. <laughs> okay, so we got uh, Trevor McGuire. We got uh, number one, Dirt, Alice in Chains. Hells yeah. Awesome Great album. Uh, number two, Metallica from uh, Metallica. Black album. Uh, number Number three, uh, Vulgar Display of Power. Yes, great album from Pantera. Uh, Sacrament, Lamb of God. Uh, Rain and Blood from Slayer. Fucking Jesus Christ, great. everyone that follows us is a fucking metalhead. Yeah, it's, I love it. Um, <laughs> Sublime, Sublime. Uh, Insomnia, Head P.E. Uh, prequel from Ghost. Uh, Follow the Leader, Corn. Uh, Rage Against the Machine, Rage Against the Machine. Nice. That's good. That's a good did you, album. Did you like that? Yeah. Yeah, it was Sorry. pretty good. I mean, you know, this uh, where's Heist Click Rob Swallow writes. <laughs> Where is Heist Click? We should play we should play a video from Heist Click on there. We can't get a strike it's your shit, no? Yeah, you'll get a strike. Dude, YouTube just strike it just strikes you. Like you can only play 10 second clips of shit. I mean, I could pay 10 seconds, stop it, and then comment on the video and then play another 10 seconds. Like, but f- I'm going to be here all day doing that shit. Okay. All right. So, Rich Ortiz, uh, he's got number one, Metallica Master of Puppets. Uh, number two, Injustice for All. Number three, Megadeth, R- Rust in Peace. Great album. Uh, number four, Machine Head, Burn My Eyes. Another good one. Uh, number five, Vulgar Display of Power from Pantera. Number six, Far Beyond Driven, Pantera. Um, number seven, uh, In Flames, <laughs> Just a Race, <laughs> Yanni Live. <laughs> oh, shit. Number eight, In Flames, Colony. Number nine, Kill Switch Engage, Alive or Just Breathing. And number 10, As I Lay Dying. Oh, my God. Uh, the Powerless yeah. Rise. Uh, okay. So that's a lot of like, like new metal, right? Like <laughs> yeah. newer metal. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go through. Did, I didn't. Uh, I didn't say Mike. Mike Martinez's list. Did yeah, I? You did. No, right? mm-hmm. I did. Like when you said, yeah. That was okay. All right. So, all right. This is your your shitty list. All right, my uh, shitty list. <laughs> now there was too much. Baz is gonna read off my list. There was actually albums that didn't make my list. That there's just ten is just not enough. You know. So I yeah. what I did was uh, I judged my list based on albums that have were my favorite at one point because they might not necessarily be my favorite right now, but at one point in my life, they were my favorite album at different, you know, because you you grow, right? Your musical taste grow with you, the shit you're into. They made made an impression at the time and like you just kept playing them over and over again. Exactly. It just stuck with you forever. So go ahead. You say an album and I'll tell you why I I wrote, I did that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Number one, Bad Motorfinger, Soundgarden. 
Grandma Viola, rest her soul, n- knows that I like that album. <laughs> the uh, uh, it's my favorite uh, favorite s- singer from uh, from the, the the era of of that era, uh, and it's mm-hmm. the most fucking rocking album. And I, I like it better than uh, Super Unknown because it's just more jamming and it has my favorite uh, Soundgarden song uh, outshined on it. So it speaks for itself. Yeah, so like uh, Super Unknown is good, but it's more like commercial, commercially poppy. Yeah, yeah, so good, but not as so good, yeah. It's tough. Like this, that's like the first one is tough. Okay, room a thousand years wide is so fucking good. Oh yeah, exactly. You know. Okay, um, ten from uh, Pearl Jam. But it might be my favorite album of all time. Like as I just really? the album, yeah, it just comes and goes as as the time goes. Like it, it's something I always go back to and go, oh my god. And it was one of those albums where you get you got sick and tired of the A side because of how overplayed it was. And then oh, you yeah. realize all the gems that are on the B side really outshine the A side. You know, songs like Release Me, Garden, Oceans, yeah. they're Oceans, you know, yeah. Porch. Oceans. The fucking second half yeah. of that album is nuts. Yeah, the 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 ones that aren't hits are the best fucking songs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so Vegas by what's that? Who's that? Oh, Crystal Method, Vegas. That's like my trip, okay. my trip hop shit. That was a lot of those songs are actually pretty well known, and we're in like a lot of like famous movies at the time. Uh, who is the um uh I'm trying to think of the Chow Yun Fat had had that movie where he was uh fuck what was like a, a the most famous Chow Yun Fat movie at the time where he was like the cop well, he's like he has the twin guns twin guns that was yeah that the, yeah. that scene with the twin guns is one of their songs so uh it's it's just a, a really dope trippy album to listen to it's all electronica and you don't have it's the type of electronica though that you don't have to be on drugs to enjoy continue okay uh hotter than hell kiss Oh yeah, we had this debate recently too, and it came down to the fact that, like, what is it? Is it Dress to Kill? Is it Kiss's first album, or is it Hotter Than Hell? And then the reason why I put Hotter Than Hell on there is because I wanted to put Alive, and I thought that that was cheating. So I have a couple of cheat albums on this list, and I thought that just saying Kiss Alive or Kiss Alive Two would have been cheating because it's kind of like a greatest hits. So I said, "Fuck it, I'll just go with my favorite Kiss album that's not a greatest hits album." So there you go. Kiss Unplugged. I well, there you go. There's my cheat. There's my cheat. And the reason yeah. why I have that one up there is that it's my favorite Unplugged album. Of, of It's just my favorite calm album to listen to. And it's my it's my breakfast album. So when I wake up in the morning and I'm eating breakfast and I got my coffee brewing and I'm making eggs and shit, I like listening to that album. It's my favorite album to listen to while I eat breakfast. And there's a lot of songs that they don't usually include on the, the set list when they play live. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that, that album actually put me on to a lot of Kiss songs that I didn't know about. You know, yeah. and I go back and go, oh shit, like, you know. And like, you know, uh, versions of Coming Home and fucking uh, Got to Choose are fucking. Uh, Which are is coming to mind too is Got to Choose. Coming Home was so good on that album. We used to sing that song to our son when he was born and we were like trying to think of like lullabies and we couldn't think of anything. So mm-hmm. me and Laura would sing coming home to, to Grayson while he would feed him bottles and shit at night. So that kind of has that little ping. That's why that's going, like, going blind too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, keep the faith. Bon just my favorite Bon Jovi album. It's uh, a big Bon Jovi fan. Uh, I know that like all the metal heads are going to go thumbs down and only the soccer moms give me thumbs up for that, but it is my favorite Bon Jovi album. And at one point, it might, it, it teeters. It's either that or New Jersey for my favorite Bon Jovi mm-hmm. album. So it's like, yeah, uh, I would, I would pick New Jersey. Definitely. Yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's like a toss up. That's more of a bluesy album too, you know. So it's like, keep the faith. Yeah, yeah. and it has my uh, favorite Bon Jovi song on it. Which one? They keep the faith. Uh, oh, okay. Um, only built for Cuban links. Only built for Cuban links is Wu Tang. Uh, the uh, that's that's Chef Raekwon and Ghostface Killer's album. Uh, I picked that one because it was the album that I learned to rap with. I, I would listen to that album, and when I was learning to rap, that was my go-to. And I think it's got and it, every Wu Tang member is on it. It might as well just be a Wu Tang album. I, I happen to like it more than Thirty Six Chambers, so that's why I put that on there. Okay, El Nino. That's Def Squad. That's uh, that's Red Man, Keith Murray, and uh, Eric Sermon from EPMD. And that was my college album. That's the album that was on loop. There was two albums on loop in college. It was mm-hmm. the uh, the best of Tribe Called Quest, and it was El Def Squad El Nino. And we used to uh, we used to burn it down, and get drunk, and listen to that. 
you know, in the background low where we would hang out in the college dorm. So it just brings me right back to that time. And it's got such used a big... – used to burn it down like Target. Yes. The um, it's 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 a it's a great album to bump to in nice weather. It's a really nice weather album. You know, it's not so heavy rappy. It's more like fun rap. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ride the lightning. Favorite Metallica album. I'm actually growing out of Metallica lately. Uh, I've I've my my entire youth. What is that? What is growing out of Metallica? It's just I've been so Metallica is that Spanish out. Spanish or something? I don't I, speak Spanish. I've seen them like six times live. I, I've uh, my entire from like eleven, or like nine to like thirty five was just Metallica, mm. Metallica, Metallica. So I had to pick my favorite Metallica album and put it on there, which is Ride the Lightning. And uh, but I'm just so Metallica out nowadays that it's just tough for me to get into that like. My favorite Metallica song is Creeping Death. And when I put it on now, I'm like, oh, my God, this is so heavy. I need to like. It's so. Oh, my God. I, I remember it uh, when I saw Metallica at the, the the Big Four concert in Yankee Stadium. And that part where uh, where, where uh, you, you chant, die, die, die. Yep. die. I, it was like thousands of people <laughs> screaming, die, die over and over again. I was like, am I in, like, I was like, I feel like I'm in some sort of fucking death cult. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. I was so fucking weird, bro. But it was great at the same time. But imagine the people outside of the stadium hearing, die, die. <laughs> <laughs> and you're walking by Yankee Stadium like, what the fuck? <laughs> 75,000 people in Giant Stadium screaming die right now. <laughs> no, Yankee Stadium. Yankee oh, Yankee Stadium. Stadium. All right. As you're like a little old lady. I saw the giant stadium. Hey, Diablo! Diablo! <laughs> die! That's <laughs> just somebody actually died. They're like, oh. They had a heart attack. Anyway. <laughs> There's only got to be like one or two left, right, on the list? Out of exile. That's it. Oh, yeah, and out of exile is Audio Slave. Again, another one. I had to pick another one with Chris Cornell on Audio there. Audio Slave. Nice. Awesome. It's the perfect actually, marriage I of... First album. I would have picked the audio slave audio That's, slave. Uh Out of Exile is their first album, I thought. No, I think it's audio slave, audio slave. Uh the first album that the, the Out of Exile has Cochis on it. Show me how to live. That's the first album. That's that's the one. That's out of exile, you sure? Oh my god. I hate Make you. sure, motherfucker. Don't ruin my whole freaking paradigm. Audio SLC. A L B U M S Audio Slave Albums Audio Slave at uh, Slave. Five. Slave. Unless I mislabeled it. Oh no, you're right. It is Audio Slave Audio Slave. Out of Exile. My yeah. my C D has Out of Exile written on it, but it's really their first album. So that's my yeah, bad. that's like their second or third album. It is it's their third album. So uh yeah, yeah the yeah. one with Cochi's Gasoline. Gasoline's such a good fucking song. Oh, God. You know something I really like on there? Oh, Like a Stone is fucking excellent. Like a Stone. But, um, and the Highway is great. Exploder is yes. fucking awesome. Like that, Highway that last song. Great. That, that jazzy last song that ends the, the last remaining like Yeah, they're all good, man. That's such a fucking yeah. great album. So, okay, there you go. There you have it. Bad, okay. where's your list? All right, this, this is my list. Of course, we got Metallica, uh, Master of Puppets. Uh, I just remember buying that, that album from the record store, bringing it home. And it was the that, that this is uh, Metallica's debut on a major label, Electra right. album. That's so the big debate, yeah. right? It's like that album and Ride the Lightning. Usually, it's like what's the best Metallica album? The usually, mm -hmm. it's like usually like those two going back and forth with one another. But uh, yeah, I dropped the needle on that motherfucker, and I heard uh, Battery, and I was like, "Holy fucking shit!" That blew <laughs> my fucking mind. Yeah, and the and and just the production of it was fucking excellent. It sounded great. Yeah, it's a better. But it was heavy album. as fuck. It's a better. It's definitely a better sounding album than uh, Ride the Lightning. So then, uh, okay, next one, Motley Crue, Shout at the Devil. Right, awesome. This is my introduction to basically hard rock, heavy metal. Before this, I was a fucking Michael Jackson fan. Okay, so <laughs> this introduced. This introduced me to hard rock, heavy metal, and uh, Motley Crue was pretty fucking heavy and badass at the time on this album. Yeah. Um, okay. And three years later, they, they put on pink friggin' outfits and tassels <laughs> and whatever the fuck came out singing about smoking in the boys' room. But this album, they were metal. So <laughs> I don't know why they switched, 
they eventually <laughs> redeemed themselves with Girls, Girls, Girls. That was a great album. But uh, this is Motley Crue as a metal band. So, uh, number three, Prince, Purple Rain. This great soundtrack to a great friggin' movie. Well, hold on a second. Um, we'll go back for a second. That was the Theater of Pain, right? That had the the pink shit. Yeah, that was Home Sweet Home and all that soft shit. All right. Yeah, yeah. So Prince Purple Rain. I mean, think about it. Like, you know, it is Prince a great is album. Like, he's, he's a fucking musical genius too. He plays all his own instruments. Underrated guitar player, man. He's fucking an amazing guitar player. There's a, and, you know, he, he was like, you know, how like Michael Jackson was kind of feminine, you know, in the same way, like you know, Paul Stanley kisses, kind of feminine, you know. But you give him, ex but like you know, Prince was like Michael Jackson, but f uh, Michael Jackson that fucks hot bitches, man. <laughs> Prince was a, Prince was, a was a fucking pervert, man. He fucked hot chicks, you know, not little kids. The, so uh, Prince Purple Rain. There's a uh, <laughs> there's an old uh, I don't know if there's any validity to it, but I've heard it a lot in like musical circles that Eric Clapton was once asked, "What does it feel in an interview? What does it feel like to be the the greatest guitar player in the world?" And he said, "I don't know. You should go ask Prince." Yeah, maybe. I mean, he was. I, I don't know because he was a uh, a big uh, fan of uh, Jimi Hendrix. So right, that may might have gotten mixed up. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, uh, if you want to see how good Prince plays uh, uh, on guitar solos and shit, check out uh, "While My Guitar Gently uh, uh, Weeps." Right, uh, live performance from uh, I think it was some sort of like it was a big uh, group jam session at uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And Prince just fucking takes it away. He fucking murders it. out this amazing so murders a fucking solo. He throws his guitar up in the air, walks away. The guitar never fucking falls down. It's like it went to heaven <laughs> or some shit. But he just kills. Yeah, Apollonia. Apollonia was my favorite amazing. chick of his, which is my 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 one A to my favorite eighties uh, girl. Like you know, travel back in time to any decade you want, and pick two girls. And my uh, my one and my one and one A is. Uh, what's her face? Um, not Apollonia, the other one, the one that OD'd mm -hmm. from Vanity. 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 Oh my god! And she, and she used to date Nikki Six from Motley Crue. Well, there you go. <laughs> Speaking of throwbacks, yeah, Vanity is like my one A. My one is uh, Susanna Hoffs from the Bangles. Okay, so Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Um, I've gotten so much use out of Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, just from smoking the Babanya and friggin' going to the stars in my head and, or just like putting on like uh, what's that uh, uh, dark side of, of Oz where you yeah. sync up the album, dark side of the moon to wizard of Oz. And it, it somehow magically uh, it's it synchronized. <laughs> yeah. So that fucking blew my mind. So, and, and then also seeing it, it did at uh, the laser light show in uh, Hayden planetarium downtown. And just, you know, I think I was tripping on friggin', uh, Either acid or masculine, and uh, <laughs> so I had some really good times with that fucking album. Uh, Kiss Alive, which is basically the first like three albums. Of it's Kiss. your sheet album. That's what I was saying. Like, it, it yeah, was, yeah. So she, you pick. You got to pick a sheet album. Which is like you know, like that's the first time me and you we saw Kiss, the Kiss Alive 30th anniversary. We saw oh, them live God. at M Madison Square Garden, and you know, honestly, first three albums. That's fucking. That's like raw. Fucking kiss when they were I young. Understand. After, heavy. I, after I heard those first three albums, I didn't understand how they didn't become popular until Alive came out because I was like, these albums are incredible. They're mm -hmm. really good rock songs on those on all three of those albums. Um, you talking about years. Years. it's a hundred thousand years is such a good song, man. Uh, is that the same night square garden that Paul Stanley used to drive his cab? And tell people, you know, one day I'm going to be playing at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paul Stanley with his fucking stories. Uh, so Kiss Alive. I got another cheat album, Iron Maiden, Live After Death. This, okay. this is my, my right. favorite era of, of Iron Maiden. It, it, uh, they, they play songs from um, uh, Peace of Mind, uh, Power Slave, which is actually my first introduction to Iron Maiden early stuff so i put that uh that was number seven number eight perfect circle uh wow murder noms it's uh it's uh the lead singer's maynard from tool yep. uh 
and uh, it's like a side project. And this album, just like it's one of those albums that you could just play over and over and over again. It's just like it's like a metal. It's like metal, but like mellow. It's like a mellow, chill album with like good melodies, but it's it's heavy but chill. You know. Uh, so and the, the songs are excellent. Great album, timeless. Faith No More, uh, number eight. Not a bad one um, either. Angel Dust. This album is like eclectic. It's everything. It's like jazz, friggin' metal, rock, pop. Uh, it's all these different genres into one. Uh, it's an excellent album. Uh, it's their best, known as one of their best. Um, then I got um, Black Sabbath, Born Again. Now, this is um, when Ian Gillen was uh, the lead singer for one album. Uh, Ian Gillen is the, uh, what you call it, uh, the singer from Deep. Deep Purple. So mm -hmm. he did one album with these guys, and this is like the heaviest fucking Black Sabbath has ever sounded, in my opinion. It's just a dark, fucking crazy, uh, sick fucking looking at. The, the, the album cover is like a baby, but like it's a devil. It's like <laughs> a little baby, but it's like it has horns and shit. It's, it's just, it's a dark fucking album. It's really good. Um, I think is that is that ten. I don't that know. Might be ten. There are a lot that of albums that yeah. didn't make the that didn't make the list for me that are still like mm -hmm. some of my favorite albums of all time. Like uh, Alice in Chains Unplugged is is another one that I always go back to. Um, one of the uh, uh, well, another cheat album, the best of um, uh, Hole and Oats. Again, as I get older, mm -hmm. my my stuff evolves and changes. You know, uh, I, I mm -hmm. absolutely love Hole and Oats now. I almost included the spiders from Mars from uh, from um, Bowie, Bowie. Uh, but that was too new. I was like, I only got into that like a couple of years ago, so I was like, I, I mm -hmm. don't really want to add something that hasn't really like. I haven't had a comeback to that album yet. I just really liked it when I heard it, listened to it a bunch of times. There's a few other rap albums that that, that could have made the list, but then I was like, you know what? I was more of a rock guy go growing up, so I got to just take the two rap albums that have kind of influenced me the most. Another app rap album that didn't make it for my fi my favorite rapper didn't even make it. Rock him, the 18th letter, and that's like my like I no one's rhymes like he does, and that's like my favorite album to listen to rap wise when I want to get like into the lyrics of a, of a rapper. You know, even maybe even Jizz's first album or second album, Beneath the Surface or Liquid Swords. So I had to be really uh Met the Man in Red Man, How High. I that's another album I didn't put on there. You know, a blackout rather that has the how, how high song on it. So there's a lot of other albums that I really liked that didn't make the list. And uh you know I had a heart uh a, what you call it, Annie uh Steamboat Annie I think is, is the name of the album. Uh, I'm a huge heart fan, so some of them just have to get honorable mentions, and I had to keep the ones that was like, well, this might not necessarily be my favorite right now, but at one point in my life, for like three to five years, it was a favorite, so I got to give it the clout it deserves. Yeah. One honorable mention I have, I, maybe even ten. I wasn't reading the numbers, but uh, Judas Priest's uh, last album, Firepower. Was is fucking amazing. It's one of the best new newer albums that I've heard in a, in a long time. Nice. You know, and usually, like these older bands, you don't even care about their new shit. But when I heard this freaking new album, I was like, I was like a kid again. I was like, this is fucking. This sounds like they were in the eighties playing this shit. It's amazing. Yeah, so, I felt like that Judas when Death Magnetic came out. I was like, damn, this is old Metallica. Yeah, they captured that the, their youth again. You know, after that, uh, 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 screen share this. This is the album. Uh, Cover to Black Sabbath Born Again. Look at that oh, shit. That Talk looks like something satanic. out of the Lucifer uh, trade, out of the Lucifer comics. <laughs> like like one of the, like that demon baby in Lucifer that they uh, they wind up pulling out of the bot the the genie bottle or whatever it was. That's uh, yeah. This is a heavy album. So you know, I think, right. you know, like uh, on, on the Facebook page, I'm going to put up some of these uh, these albums that we talked about tonight. Put up links. That's awesome. Yeah, so, no, hell yeah. Join, join yeah, go the fucking Facebook. The, yeah. That's Facebook page. Okay, so uh, Mr. David Rodriguez Jr. says, hey, what's up, fellas? How's it going? What I miss? Mezco Superman release? Yeah, the first 15 minutes of the stream was me just cursing out Mezco <laughs> and, and talking about that in the new Wonder Woman. So if you want to see that, you're going to have to go and, uh, and just catch the first 10, 15 minutes on the replay. Well, uh, Robert, just a fan said, not a lot of female singers. Are you accusing us of some shit, man? Just spit it out. <laughs> uh, Sarah Smile is one of my favorite songs from Hole and Oats. Not my favorite song, but um, and I, I actually have like a newfound 
hole and oats thing. Like my son recently discovered hole and oats from uh, um, uh, the the movie Ready Player One. The movie ends, yeah. and when it goes to credits, the hole and oats song comes on. What I want, you got it. Might be hard to handle. That song. Love that song. I, love that song. I, and I like private eyes. They're watching you. It's just so great. And they're so awesome live, man. Uh, you seen them live? Yeah. Yeah, we went and saw them three years ago. We saw them live at uh, at Jones Beach. Jones Beach. Oh, and they were really good, man. Like, really. Do they both still have his afro and shit? Uh, no, no, no. He had a – well, you know, he might – he had his hat. He had a hat on. He still had his mustache. Um, and they were talking to the crowd, and they were interacting with each other, and they were telling stories and shit, and – it was, it was it was pretty cool. It make my dreams come true. There you go. So uh, so now that Grayson likes it, now I kind of like even like it even more now. So it's a thing for us to kind of share. Plus, anytime a young kid uh, you know gets into something that's old and actually good, you kind of want to nurture that and and not make them fall down the rabbit hole of like you know a little Wayne rabbit hole, so to speak. You know, actually, uh, like me me and your brother used to whenever we heard Rich Girl. That would okay. come on the radio, and then when he goes, "It's a bitch, girl." We better... <laughs> <laughs> said, "Bitch." <laughs> uh, we fucking lose our minds when he said "bitch." We're like, "How does he say that on the radio?" <laughs> and then you know what? Ten ten years later, freaking NWA just comes out with a fucking album filled with fucking curse songs. <laughs> and of course, I lost my mind listening to that, to that too. Exactly. Yeah. The um. Uh, somebody had mentioned in the chat uh, favorite uh, vocalist was Lane Stanley, Lane Staley rather, uh, as his favorite vocalist. And I have favorite vocalists too. Like my fa one of my favorite singers of all time is Ann Wilson from Heart, and even the sister. The two of them together are fucking unbelievable, man. And she's an incredible guitar player. So I'm a big Heart fan. What are you gonna do? I even like their you '80s know, I stuff. Was, I was so pissed off when Lane Staley died. The same day, Left Eye Lopez fucking died from uh, TLC. Yeah. And they, they paid no fucking attention to fucking Lane Staley's death. Yeah. It was like Left Eye Lopez 24-7 on MTV. And I think on MTV2, they, they played a few videos. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, are you fucking kidding me? The le uh, fucking Lane Staley is like one of the, like the best vocalists of the grunge era. You know, that MTV used to fucking sweat in the, you know, the mid-90s. See, I thought that uh, Lane and and Jerry Cantrell were like another one of those two that perfectly complemented each other. You know, it's oh, like yeah. their voices just like Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, uh, you know, Paul and 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 uh, Paul McCartney and uh, uh, what's his face? How the fuck? Like John Lennon. Like it was just like the two of them worked. Uh, Richie Sambora and, bon jo and John Bon Jovi. So Lane Stanley and 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 the other guy, um, Eric Cantrell, is just perfect, you know. And he, when you went and saw them live, he would sing most of their songs too. Like he, they would almost split the songs up, you know. So, um, so I mean, awesome stuff. Uh, yeah, that chick from Walk Like an Egyptian is also so hot. Says Rob, just fan. Yeah, that's Susanna Hoffs. That's my one, my number one '80s chick. Um, the Wilson sisters, as far as fingers go, we had just talked about that. Bl a blonde chick from Human League. Don't you want me? <laughs> the um, the, all the bangles were hot. Here he goes. The bangles were so fucking hot. Um, I also like Blondie. I like a lot of Blondie songs. You know, I like her. I think she's like sultry and sexy too. You know, so it's like, it's you know, it depends. Oh, on yeah, no, Pat Benatar, bro. Pat Benatar, bro. I mean, come on. You know, like it depends on where I am too, right? Like you might have a favorite album or something. Like, look, if you're like at a poolside somewhere, right, and it's a hot summer day, and you're like sipping, like you know, pina coladas and shit. I mean, you might want to hear Metallica. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to hear Metallica in that circumstance. You don't want to hear Metallica, oh, when I'm like, you know, doing Metallica -y type things. Maybe speeding on a highway or something. You know, <laughs> uh, getting ready to play a baseball game or hitting the gym. You know, yeah, so, uh, definitely, yeah, lifting weights is metallic. It's like, uh, so there you go. You know, it really depends on on the mood you're in and where you're going to be. I mean, I had like, I had albums that I would listen to only in certain circumstances, and those were the best albums for that time. Like Boot Camp Click's greatest hit, I would listen to when it rains out. I was like, that's the album I want to rap album I want to listen to when it's raining out because it's just like calm. But like kind of hardcore gangster rap, but good lyrics and but the beats are all kind of chill. 
and it's got a, a very down feeling to it. And when it's raining and muggy out, you kind of it'll bring you into that mood of the of the weather and shit. That is how my fucking mind works. I like to match up the circumstances I'm I'm into the songs I'm listening to. Oh God. Anyways, okay, so those are the albums. Those were all the albums. Guys, go join the fucking page and put your favorite albums up. And if you want, just put a, uh, an album up that you like and say, hey, check out this. This was cool. You know, it's all part didn't of you, you left out, didn't you? You were telling me before the show that one of your biggest idols as a kid was uh, Boy George from uh, Culture Club. It, he was. He And the problem <laughs> was... <laughs> <laughs> it I was when, you to go along it was when he separated himself from the culture club is where i kind of like uh you know i had to separate my i had to divorce myself from him at that point <laughs> so but, uh, chameleon with your shit is that uh, <laughs> i don't know i tumble you for you i tumble for you that was your song <laughs> That's good party pool music too. If that happens to be paying and playing and I'm poolside and you know, some start doing flips around. I tumble for you. I tumble for you. <laughs> Hold oh, on, man. one second. Hold my drink. Start doing flips. <laughs> the, um, all right, enough music. If anybody else has more musical shit, this they want to talk about. Toy channel. Are we talking about music? What the fuck? Dude? Oh god. Like, right. We're gonna wrap up this with 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 some fun. With some fun pop culture news. No, uh, there's no fun girl pop culture. There is no fun news anymore. News is not fun anymore. I'm just trying it's to cancel find... culture now. It's just, uh, cancel culture. It's cancel culture. Matic Christian the Gathering is racist now. Um and I will tell you, I, I I will I will say that I do actually agree with one of the things they did, because even I was kind of like, yo, that's a little weird and off putting. But a lot of the cards, there was a bunch of cards that they recently banned from the game because of racism, which is just weird to me. But some of the uh, cards they banned, and I'll, I'll leave the real juicy, saucy one for last. Uh, they banned this card called Cleanse, Destroy All Black Creatures. I'm sure the people that are watching now at least know a little bit about what magic is. It's just like, if for those that don't know, it basically mixes like poker and and like uh and like chess or pokemon type game if you've ever played that you you know you're a spellcaster you bring out spells you cast spells out of your hand you draw cards and it's basically like lord of the rings it's like dungeons and dragons and poker like the card game dungeon dragons the poker the card game and uh you know there are different colors of magic right so there's white magic and black magic are two of the multi colors multiple colors and it's not black people and white people okay it's it's light magic and dark necromancy magic and they're connected to emotions not peoples okay so white magic would be hope and love and harmony and and and, and heavenliness and, and and black magic like the dark side is ambition and greed and death magic what 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 oh my god Really? Fuck you! You're fucking inter inter interrupting us over oh, Seamus. <laughs> fucking Seamus, bro. So, um, so there's light and dark magic, right? So now they're they're this this card called Cleanse, which is destroy all black creatures in play, is now racist because you're destroying black creatures with a white card called Cleanse, and that's dumb because there's a black card that destroys all white creatures too because they're the antithesis of one another light side dark side this isn't black people white people this is this is stupid but whatever one of these things i do actually agree on i said that before uh crusade all white creatures get plus one plus one apparently that's racist uh you know because of the crusades or whatever uh then there's a card called jihad that's uh uh, that's racist now too. Uh, in prison, they're saying that the cool. art on this. They could have just changed the art on the card. They're saying that the the card art is. Uh, are you guys even seeing what I'm seeing? Okay, so yeah, all right. Yeah, I've seen. Um, the, the 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 man in the iron mask type looking card with the gentleman who looks like they could be of, uh, you know, dark European descent or African descent or even Latino descent. Uh, but that is racist now to have people of that skin color i guess depicted like that so that's not good our uh, first strike this is uh this is called devils throwing stones i believe and it's just a bunch of devil looking characters throwing stones so i don't understand the racism in that card 
for whatever reason. Uh, this is our uh, Pradish Gypsies, because uh, now I guess in Europe, the word gypsy is now a slang. To, it's, it's like, I guess it's the N word for Europeans, apparently. So um, Pradish Gypsies now has to be uh, taken off. It's a green creature card, and it's about wandering nomads, uh, obviously depicted on the card. So that's that's not good either. However, there is one that is pretty suspect, and I can't help. I'm not for, I am totally not for censoring. Censorship is not cool. We don't do censorship on this channel. Um, I don't care what it is. If you don't like it, you don't watch it. If you feel uh, uh, offended by something, turn the channel. Turn off this channel even. Uh, this whole cancel culture thing is just absolutely ridiculous. I am not on board with any of it. However, this one's a little crazy, right? So i never seen this card before. It's called Invoke Prejudice. And look at what's on the card. <laughs> it's a bunch of hooded, pointed hooded creatures, characters, people in hoods. Coming out of the mist, wielding battle axes, and it's yeah. about uh, it's blue magic. It's about stopping your opponent from casting their spells. That's how blue magic works. So, okay, invoke prejudice, and then the characters on the cards look like they're a bunch of clansmen. Uh, that to me is kind of like where were you going with this? But these cards are all from 1993 when the sets first came out, 1993, 1994. Mm -hmm. So those were the first two sets of magic. Um, so now, uh, you know, again, Magic the Gathering is starting their whole, uh, you know, we have to weed out everything and we have to uh, censor everything. And what I'm seeing, for, you know, is uh, buy our stuff, buy our stuff because, look, we're for the cause. That's all I'm seeing from these companies, uh, you know, Magic. Yeah, this card. I don't know, Baz, if you want to weigh in on this. Uh, this card in particular are, is a little weird, but... Are there that many fucking pro-censorship fucking Tumblrite ninnies out there? I mean, don't the average normal person kind of like uh, frowns upon this censorship shit? Don't we outnumber these fucking assholes? Uh, it but doesn't they, matter. They're pandering to them. They're pandering yeah, no, to them. It doesn't group. matter. Cancer culture. Onto, apparently, according to... Uh, according to... Um, uh, uh, corporations, Twitter is God. Twitter isn't the real world. Out of out of the the few million people on Twitter, only ten percent of the people actually use it and and actually comment. So it's such a small, small, small sample size of things. Uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even have known this as a thing. Fred actually hit me up with a video of Tim Pool talking about this. This is why I was mentioning it on the show tonight. Uh, you know, you know who Tim Pool is. He's always on Joe Rogan, and he did a a, a video talking about these cards and and because he's a magic guy. And uh, that's how this got brought to my attention. I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, I just think it's 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 absolutely crazy. It's weird. Again, this card being one thing that I kind of am a little like, I raise an eyebrow like, oh shit, I didn't even know this this was around. Um, but yeah, it seems like they're they're just kind of um, they're trying to cancel everything. They're canceling Cracker Barrels, getting canceled too. Cracker Barrel now is uh, people all over Twitter, uh, minorities on Twitter, is, uh, and and not just minorities. It's really the the Karen mob, the 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 Antifa Karen uh, mob. You know those uh, the social just the white social justice warrior, pink haired giant giant earrings that are like in you know those earrings that are like in your ear. Like they, all these people seem to have like a checklist, a lot of tattoos on their arm, and uh, those are the people that are crying out about this stuff so crack a barrel is on its way of getting canceled too they're saying that it, the, the racism just in the name crack a barrel meanwhile the etymology of crack a barrel is that back in the day um when you would uh, be on your horse and buggy and you would go to like uh, a pl stop at a place to eat or stop for like supplies like you needed a horse blanket or some rope you would have um the tradesmen at the trading post and what the, these they would have crackers in barrels and after they sold the crackers out of these barrels th that they were shipped in they would use them as tables for people to come into their trading post and sit and and actually eat at and that's where cracker barrel got its theme from so it's basically like a trading post you know type of thing but you know the twitter outrage mob is just like you know oh it's it's the worst thing ever and i'll never go in there and they, they want to ban the rocking chairs on the front of a cracker barrel they have like like a, like actually handmade rocking chairs and it reminds them of like the racist south where like the the rocking chairs were on the porch 
you know, of, of, of the white slave owners or something. It's just now rocking chairs are racist. You shouldn't, you can't own a rocking chair now. You know, it's, I, it's I, like, it's, it, that's the new religion. Like, you know, you know, us, when we grew up, like I grew up in the eighties, nineties, like we had to deal with like the religious right, you know, religious people would always, uh, you know, tell you, uh, you couldn't say this, you couldn't say that that's vulgar. They would, they would try to impose their sense of morality on you. Now you have the far left, telling you what to say, what not to say, what, you know, they're, cens they're the censors now. So, I, I don't get the censorship mentality, man. It is not good. You see how it just spirals out of control? So it goes from censoring something that is, that might need to be censored. They, they're actually taking the guns, uh, Yosemite Sam and and uh, Elma Fudd in the new HBO series of the revival of the Lo Looney Tunes. They're not allowed to have guns anymore. The guns Yosemite are Yosemite Sam, he's a fucking cowboy. Right, so there's no guns. The hunter, dude, Elma Fudd doesn't have a gun anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He chases them around with a sickle now, which is like until someone stabs their mother with a knife or something, and then they blame the fucking sickle, and then now here we are back to censoring all weapons. You know, at least like you know, it's funny. Like at least the the right, the religious right. Like at least if you you by their rules and you lived like that, like at least you're promised. Like they they, they try to promise you heaven, right? You got eternal life. <laughs> Like what the fuck? What the fuck are these people problem? What do we get? You this get miserable life and the approval of some blue-haired land whale. But, get the fuck but out you of know here. what? What happens? At though, least the other one, I got Jesus, and I'm living in the clouds, right? You don't even you get approval until you don't get approval. You're one yeah, of them yeah, until yeah, you're yeah. not one of them. So oh, it's, it's like, perfect example. Look at what's her name? Uh, what's it called? Uh, J.K. Rowling. That's, well, that's ridiculous. Well, that yeah. whole thing with J.K. Rowling thing is just absolutely ridiculous. She didn't even say, and she's uh, this is a person that fights for equal rights for L the LGBT community, ex like and 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 minorities exclusively. She's like at the forefront, waving the flag for everyone. And now the woke mob is turning on their own leaders. You got to stay away from this, guys. George Collins said it best: "It's bad for you. Stay away from the censorship. Stay away from the woke mobs." Because they're going to be coming for you and everyone else you know next. I'm not being a conspiracy theory about this. My channel's going to be on the chopping block too. You got to just kind of. Okay. Hey guys, all right, at, all right, this, all right. at this point, have you figured out we're not SJWs in the least? So. Yeah, exactly. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolute ridiculousness. It's insane. Um, oh, it's please. Did I, I hey, can't listen, find. You got to fight against it. You can't be lax with this. You got to fight against it. If there's something, like, look, if there's something you like, uh, the, they, the problem is, is that you can say something and have a point like, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, this is bad. We should not censor it, but we should like let people know through teaching history that maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Maybe these ideas of the past weren't the best ways to like, you know, gone with yeah. the wind now is, is, is gone. They banned gone with the wind and, and they're going to have disclaimers before it and all that. Maybe be a parent or an uncle or a cousin and explain shit to people, take some fucking responsibility and we wouldn't have to have labels on everything and and an outrage mob and I, I don't understand it like i, I just i should, don't understand this culture if you, really judge, if you judge history through the lens of uh today uh it's all of it's fucked up yeah like with yeah. all these these tearing down statues and shit like i mean at least put it up for people to vote for to to get rid of the statues and then if you get rid of them take them down put them in a fucking museum Dude, if you go to a museum, every fucking statue like has somebody who's a mass murderer or somebody who was involved in slavery or some bullshit in there. Look yeah. at the Egyptians. We're gonna take down the fucking pyramids. They were built by slaves, right? Exactly. The so fucking, just, the fucking the King Tut and all those guys. They were fucking. They, they, somebody they, mentioned they on a Come on, somebody mentioned shit. on a tweet that that classic uh, Greek, um, cl the classical Greeks, right? The Aristotle, Plato, um, yeah. wrote in their their. Their memoirs, their novel, like uh, Plato's Republic, Aristotle had his book, right? They wrote that any um, any civilized nation needs to be built on the black back of slaves. That's mm. not really too cool in my book, but are we going to now destroy every Plato, Aristotle, and and um, what's his face? Uh, who is the other guy? Who is the main guy? It was Plato? Plato Aristotle, know, what's his name? Um... Socrates. Socrates. We're gonna tear down Socrates, all of their Socrates, man. because we're Socrates. gonna we're gonna put modern sensibilities of knowing better 
and attribute them to concepts that were from thousands of years ago, it's insane. It's bad. You could just say, hey, I don't agree with that. Okay, I'll move on. You know. Well, uh, what do you mean, Robert just the fan? They've always done this even in the past. Then done what? Probably the, the dictatorship stuff. Yeah. It's always like a, it ebbs and flows. It comes and goes. In the 80s, it was the yeah. censoring metal and rap music and all that bullshit. But now it's yeah, of course, pervasing, yeah. though, into everything. It's hit comics. Yeah. If you're if you're part of Comics Gate, like our buddies from Zade Comics or Billy Tucci or any of these guys, Ethan Van Skyver, you're you're a racist, you're a bigot, uh, and the, and the, I know these guys. I mean, I don't know them. I don't watch them when they're in their houses talking over dinner, but they don't. They've never shown me any sign of racism or anything like that. It's the funniest thing is too. It's like you'll see like anti Comics Gate people. Like most of them are like fucking pasty white fucking white bread people, right? Right. And the comics gay people, like fucking a lot of them are Hispanic. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> people yeah. of color. Guys, and black it's like, in there. It's so you got like the the the, the pasty whites, uh, the anti comics gay calling the comics gay racists and white supremacists. It's fucking. Who was the guy that you that was that, 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 who was the guy that that used to be down with Ethan? He drew uh, Injustice. The artist uh, Mike the, Miller. He's Mike Asian. Miller. Is he like part uh, Native American what? or something? Yeah. No, he's Asian. He's, he's Asian. Asian. Yeah. <laughs> it's like come it's on. everyone's it's stupid. All all that is is just getting away from like the, the corporate like fucking uh like uh, insults that are being thrown at us. So like say you don't like Ghostbusters. Oh, you're freaking a misogynist. You don't like uh turning this person uh gender swapped or gay, like Spider Man, gay bisexual. Oh, you're fucking You're this, you're, you're that, exactly. You're, it's, yeah, it's just it's, it's tiring. It's like come on, let's just Let's let's fucking have a space where we can just make comics just about superheroes fighting bad guys. You know what I mean? Without all this fucking political shit. But the thing is, you know what? A large part of it is too, because I remember comics for a while. They would kill off characters to get mainstream attention and press. Right. Remember, they would all oh, the Human Torch next week is dying in issue four forty five or what? You know, shit like that. That like they would just kill them off, and you know, they would always bring them back. So like, people stop paying attention. So I think this. You know, all this shit like, you know, oh, do we have our first gay kiss and the, the next issue? You know, I think a lot of that stuff is just to get attention from oh, the yeah. mainstream. You know, to get headlines it's and crap. Of, yeah, not, yeah. No, I was just going to piggyback on what you're saying and saying that there's a lot of uh, corporate virtue signaling that's just disgusting. Yes. Because all I'm seeing is, please don't loot our stores. Please continue to buy our, our corporate products because we don't give a fuck about you with the exception of our bottom dollar. That's all it comes down to. Uh, there are there are there are corporations that are being called out to be canceled because they didn't say anything. They didn't put a a, a black post down on Black Tuesday, so cancel yeah. those people. It's ridiculous. It's it's outrage mob nonsense. Scarlet letter, Salem witch trial bullshit. Salem witch trials. It's definitely it's, Salem witch trials. It's, Look it's, it up if you don't know what Salem witch trials are. It's a, a lesson in in history that uh, is uh, seems to be re repeating right now. So look it up. It's a it's a cautionary tale. Yeah, and it's it's just absolutely ridiculous. So here I am sitting like, you could be on the left side, right, or you could be on the right side of the po political spectrum, or you can mm -hmm. put on the fucking glasses. I put this up on the Facebook page. You can put the glasses on like Rowdy Piper did and just see through all this bullshit and all this virtue signaling nonsense. It doesn't mean we don't agree with the protesters to a certain extent. We definitely don't agree. I don't know if I can speak for Basil on this, but we don't agree with the rioters. Whether you do or you don't, it's the I want to keep it to the pop culture and how it's influencing our comics and movies and, and video games and and, uh, and and action figure purchases. I mean, can you guys imagine trying to... You can't get a Slave Leia. You can forget that fucking number. That ship is sailed. They're, they're so definitely you'll never not have a call her that. The Jedi, uh, thing again. Because it's... Right, slave, hold, even if they change uh, the name... From slave What's layer a, to like, like uh, you know, rebels, uh, like a hut slayer or something, hut slayer layer or some shit. Slayer. You know, whatever. If they just change the name, it's body shaming to women because she's in a bikini and she's got a chain around her neck. It's fucking ridiculous. All right, let's let's, let's end the show with this this piece of news. Uh, share the screen. This is what we're talking about. Go ahead, Baz. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. It's up. Go ahead. Okay. 
CW fires the Flash actor Hartley Sawyer for derogatory remarks. So uh, somebody dug some friggin' rat uh, to gain some Twitter attention or, and clout dug up tweets from this actor from CW who plays the little elongated man on the Flash. Uh, she dug up tweets to this this guy's uh, Twitter. I guess at the time he was trying to be be a comedian, and it's very similar to the uh, James Gunn case. And around the same time too, uh, this guy was making outrageous tweets on Twitter. And I think this was this was a thing in 2012 to around 2014, to just to say the most outrageous fucking things to get attention. Um, here are some of the tweets. He got fired for for these tweets. Tweets that happened eight to ten years ago, mind you. But go ahead. Hold on, I'm trying to click on them. No, uh, no, nah, they're not. I can't. I can't get them. All right, well, maybe if I can you bigger. Can you, well, I mean, uh, one, is, uh, one is it enjoyed a secret boob viewing at an audition today. That's really, that's like, uh, what does that even mean? Like, uh, like, how is that like misogynistic? And all of a sudden these, it's these women that are like, I don't know, man. It's like, we so weird to me that I thought the, this just, it's just words. It's just like people acting like idiots and saying stupid shit. It's fucking part of growing up in life. Sorry. Um, no, but the thing was like the, the intent was to shock. Yeah. He wrote like, Oh, like I like my women, like in a, in a burlap sack or something. It's like, it, like, yeah. Okay. Funny, bad jokes. You might find them. As, a lad, as a lad, one of my favorite activities was kidnapping homeless, homeless women and cu cutting their breasts off. That's a little nuts. It, <laughs> no, they, but the thing is, they're all nuts. Shut the fuck up this site. All right. <laughs> no, they're all nuts. You read them and you're like, oh, that's that's kind of fucking weird, you know? What? Right. But all right. Go ahead. What happened to Seamus? Now who gives a fuck? Go ahead. I don't know. They're all they're all they, they all sound crazy. I can't really read this site fucking sucks of course. Uh <laughs> but um yeah, you read them and you're like, whoa, holy shit. But that's the point that was the point back then. Yeah, shock. And that was that was something so outrageous. James Gunn was doing the same shit. Yeah, exactly. But now so, it's like, no, he uh, must apologize. And you want to know what? They're going to apologize, and they're going to make you bend the knee, and it's never going to be good enough. Never he's bend, fired. He's never fired. bend the knee. They went after uh, Stephen Amell for being uh, racist too this week. They they want yeah. the, they want his they want all that shit canceled. They want him canceled. They they want the the they went after Grant Gustin for not sticking up for his co-star. Uh, uh, over her, uh, the interracial relationships that they're having on the show, and because the actress came under fire, Candace, whatever her name is, and Grant Gustin didn't come out and immediately defend her. Now they want him canceled for not sticking up for her. It's insanity. It's well, he, he went against this guy. He was like, words have words have meaning. Like yeah. he bitched out. Like he didn't stick up for him. Of they do because it's he, he they, threw him under the bus. That's it. That's all they're gonna do. I, I heard somewhere about like making friends and. Hollywood. I was listening to um, what podcast was I listening to? I was listening to this. I was listening to Inside You with Michael Rosenbaum, and he was talking to Henry Winkler. This was this past Henry Winkler returned on his show, and uh, he was asking Henry Winkler, you know, the Fonz, do you have any friends in Hollywood? He's like, I got a couple of friends that I talk to and check in on. He's like, you're one of them. They're actually really close friends, and he names a couple other people, and he's like, and I have a lot of just acquaintances, people that he says you don't really have relationships with people. When you do shows with them, it's more about um, we're on a show together and we're just using each other for clout to further our career. And then once it's over, I'm on to the next thing and on to the next person that could make my career better. He's like, and that's why he has problems in Hollywood and he only stays with people that are closest to him, like Michael Rosenbaum, like um, all the guys from Happy Days he's still friends with. Uh, who else did he mention? He mentioned... Uh, uh, the, the dude that he's on the show with now that's that did Saturday Night Live. I forgot his name. He was in uh, Super Bad. He's like, there are very few people that I stay cool with and I don't completely open myself up to because it's very much like, oh, yeah, we're friends now. Oh, wait, uh, I got to turn my back on you now. I got to like, you know, dog eat dog. I got to make sure I'm, I'm good. As opposed to everyone uh, standing arm yeah. in arm and saying, no, fuck you, you move. Doing the Captain America back to them. You know, this out instead of agreeing and being like, please don't cancel us. Oh, I'm going to throw this guy under the bus. There's no integrity at all in Hollywood at all. 
And well, Tr Tr hold on, Trevor McGuire says silence equals violence. Now, yes, silence equals violence. But then, if you open your mouth and you don't say the exact same fucking things that they think or believe or what they want you to say, isn't you're that gonna get attacked? Isn't that 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 harkens back to your comment about it being like a modern religion, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like you don't parrot exactly what I'm saying back to me. Uh, silence is violence, but you have to parrot what I'm saying back to me and never deviate from it. It's almost like when you're in church and it's like the priest says something and then you say your thing back and it's like mm -hmm. making a mindless zombie out of you. Like, you know, we have these, these prerequisite, uh, answers we want you to have and things we want you to say and, and, and catchphrases. Uh, and if you don't repeat them back and join the outrage mob, then we're coming for you next. And it's fucking ridiculous. Well, you know what? <laughs> Fuck them. They think they have the upper hand right now, these scumbags, but, you know, it's going to pass. It's really fucking. But, uh, really I hope so, man. I don't know. They're starting to fucking dig true. No, nah, I will. They dig their heels in. Look at what they're doing in Seattle. I don't want to talk about that on the show. In but. in Seattle. Okay, real quick. I have to. Uh, my my aunt, my beloved aunt Dean, who is my mother's twin, my deceased mother's twin, made a list, a music list. So I, I got have to read it off. Oh, all right, nice. Get to it. So um, her top ten is. Oh, that's Jenny. Okay. Her top ten is Purple Rain makes makes it Prince nice awesome uh, Copacabana <laughs> from Barry Manilow. I like how we go from cancel culture rage to my beloved ads. That's what you're gonna get on this show. It's it's what a fucking we're real so people. We're real people here, man. Like this isn't like you know the 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 the, the, the you know the the I'm a shill for for getting people to to. to you know, for, for this company or this company, which is probably why fucking yeah. Sideshow dropped me anyway, but go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, this site sucks right now anyway. Uh, Copacabana, Barry Metal. Uh, number three, Jane Oliver. I, I don't know. Carousel? Never heard of that. Um, Mama from Boys to Men. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, Jim Croce, Show Me Georgia. That sounds good. Uh, Oh, Tony, what's his name? Uh, the Italian crooner? Oh, yeah. Left my heart. Tony left Bennett. My heart Tony Bennett left my heart in San Francisco. Nice. Uh, Cherish from the Association. You know who that is? Nope. This is all before like my way. time, most of this stuff. I mean, I like shit from before my time, too, but this is like really uh, before the, my time. The Grease soundtrack. Hells, yeah. Nice. Uh, Staying Alive from the Bee Gees. Excellent. Nice. That is a good one. Uh, Crack Rear View from Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> That's actually a good fucking album, man. <laughs> it's so like, oh, commercial. But yeah. And then she got uh, Michael, Michael Buble, To Be Loved. Nice. Very nice. He's a good and, uh, Let me do uh, Jen real quick. That's her daughter. Uh, her number one is Thriller. Nice. Michael good Jackson. Voice. Purple Rain. Purple Rain made a lot of people's lists. Um, number three, Nirvana. Never mind. Okay. Uh, number four, Led Zeppelin from Led Zeppelin, the first album. Nice. Uh, number five, Joshua Tree from U2. Good. That's a pretty decent number, choice. Number six, Abbey Road from the Beatles. That's a very good choice. Uh, number Yeah, I know, right? Like, uh, I'm sorry good. I left off the Beatles. The Beatles are excellent. Uh, number seven, Live in Cook County Jail, B.B. King. That's, that's interesting. Interesting choice. Uh, Number eight, Vitology from Pearl Jam. Oh, that's interesting. That's a great. I love that album. That's such a real. That's a really good album. It's very heady. Um, yeah, very heady and uh, very. I don't know. It's 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 strange. Like it's uh, it's it's it sounds lo-fi. It sounds like very garage garage bandy, but the production is very high. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's, mm -hmm. it's, okay, so, um, Bad Out of Hell from Meatloaf. It's a good classic. album. Um, and uh, Legend from Bob Marley. So you have some... Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Very very wide awesome. wide gamut there. Nice stuff. Good choices. See, Rob, just a fan wrote, I also like Motown. That's, see, this is where I'm at now. Nowadays, when I'm going for walks in my neighborhood, socially distancing, doing all that bullshit, when I'm just hanging out with the kids on the back porch when we're grilling before dinner, I put on Pandora and I put the Motown channel on. And I'm always listening to Motown now. So now I'm getting into like, you know, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Uh, you know, um, I mean, shit, Otis Redding, you know, so it depends on where you are in your life. You know what I'm saying? So 
Uh, uh oh, we're getting attacked. <laughs> <laughs> what about that Edie Brickell uh, album? Oh, uh, still, drown. Still... it was actually a good album. Yeah, that album was really good too. All right. Look, we're gonna boogie. I'm getting. I gotta go catch the last hour of SmackDown with Little Man. We went pretty long this week. It was good, nice, chill episode. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, again, leave a comment, a like, join the page, uh, Facebook page. Catch me on Twitter. No one's on Twitter apparently. Maybe I should jump off Twitter because no one tweets uh, in our little circle. So uh, I'm trying to build up the, the Twitter page a little bit. Other than that, guys, join the care. Facebook page, guys. Yeah, the Facebook page is really where it's at. So if you're on Facebook, I know Rob just a fan doesn't doesn't do Facebook, but if you're on Facebook, do the fucking Facebook page. I know Rob Swallow, a few other guys are in there. I think Trevor's in there. All right, guys, take care. Brush your hair. We'll see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Hopefully there'll be some more cool shit to look at, and hopefully cancel culture will just go away. I doubt it, though. We'll see you guys soon. Peace.